Hello and welcome to my Portal 2 logic video. In this video I will go over two of my T flip flop designs, two of my SR latch designs, a couple of random clocks, and um, two pulse limiters. I won't go too far into depth on how to make them or how they work, but I'll, I'll try my best to make it understandable. So without further ado, here we go. Uh, this is my first T flip flop. and. Uh, well, it's a toggle. That's all it is, really. You just have one button that toggles between an on value and an off value. And um, here's the logic. It's very simple. It's just one OR gate. You have one laser that's connected to two catchers, or however many catchers you want. And um, the other laser is connected to the one button. So when you press the button, this laser turns on, activates this relay, which, by the way, this relay is connected to the moving platform. So this moving platform will start moving. This laser is no longer obstructed, which turns on this relay. And when these two relays are on, it'll turn on this laser, which makes sure that this keeps, uh, this stays on until the, another laser is obstructed. So you'll see it here. Now they're both on, and then the other one's obstructed, so they that that laser turned off, and that's. How that one works and um, in fact it's kind of a dynamic thing you can hook up as many lasers as you want and uh, have a state machine type of thing so I'll go from state 1 to state 2 from state 2 to state 3 or wherever you want to go um, uh, one thing to note is these platforms both these platforms they have to start as uh, they, they have to start as disabled and they have to oscillate and unfortunately, because of that, you can only go states 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, or however many long you have, it'll go back and forth. Um, logic's the same, you just hook up your catchers to a one laser, and you hook up the button to the other. And that's how it works. Um, so moving on to my other SR latch now. Uh, this one, I think, I think this one's a better version. Um, I haven't quite decided, but it is a lot more complicated as you can plainly see. But uh, it changes state quicker because it doesn't have to wait for that platform to obstruct a laser. Um, the way it works is it uses this platform here as a pulse limiter. So um, you'll see that when I press the button, uh, this button's connected to this platform, which then obstructs this laser. And any signal that is anded together with this signal when the laser is obstructed, uh, this signal will turn off and uh, it will make any any other signal that's anded together with this turn off as well. So that's uh, this is uh, my pulse limiter. Um, so this button is connected to uh, the pulse limiter, uh, this laser, and the bridge. Uh, this laser is also hooked up to the pulse limiter. This bridge is also hooked up to the pulse limiter. So you'll see here that um, when I press the button, the pulse limiter will obstruct this laser, make this bridge turn off, and then right back on again pretty quickly. So there you go. Um, and that's faster than the three second minimum that you have to have on a push button. That's pretty important. Um, in this case, since this button is being pressed, it's sending a signal to this laser here. And the last signal that needs to be satisfied is the button press. So it'll very quickly shoot a laser to this catcher. And this catcher is hooked up to the box dropper and uh, the box dropper will eliminate that block thus um, uh, killing uh, the signal pretty quickly but you'll see it you'll see the laser flash on and off just look at that and there you go um, so that's how that one works really quick over to here this is my first uh, SR latch model using lasers um, I don't like this one as much um, but basically it's just an OR gate you have one button hooked up to that laser uh, this relay is hooked up to this um, this rotating platform thing and uh, so it's on this laser hits this relay which turns that on keeping this on um, this platform needs two of these to be satisfied this is just a not gate here for, for this button so when you press this button on this not gate turns this off right here and thus turning that relay off and resets everything here. 
I don't like this one too much, but hey, it works, and it's kind of cool, I guess. Um, here's the much simpler version. You just have one button for the bridge, one button for the spawner. So, I, I got that backwards, but anyway, this activates the bridge. This activates the spawner. There you go. So, now you have one button to turn something on, one button to turn something off. So, I hope you can think of something cool to do with that. Um, Here's a really fast pulse limiter. I don't know why you'd want to use this, but you'll get a very quick signal on this wire right here. Just like that. Um, the way it works is it just you just hook up your button to the platform and the laser at the same time. And since light travels faster than a platform, uh, you'll get a quick signal, a quick little pulse. And there you go. Don't know what you'd use that for, but there you go. Um, here's a very steady clock. Um, and you can use this for a very steady anything, a steady bridge turning on and off, or just whatever you want. Um, and simple as that. I mean, you just have a platform move back and forth, yeah. And you can lengthen this out as far as you want. And you can even put multiple lasers, too, to have different stages of the uh, clock. Um, and here is the last thing that I have, which is just a, a seizure clock. Yeah. Um, it, this is the fastest clock I think that exists that you can make, but um, it, it moves so fast that a block will stay on top of a bridge. Yeah. So that's basically it. Um, I hope that I help somebody in trying to make something more dynamic than you can without having to get into Hammer, because um, I, I know that Hammer is really complicated. So I just hope that this helps somebody make some cool puzzles. and. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.